council meeting for May 5th. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And a moment of silence, please. You may be seated. Madam Secretary, roll call. William Caldwell. Here. Gary Simpson. Here. Marlon Milner. Olivia Brady. Here. Derek Perry. Here. Sonny Sanders. Here. Linda Christian. Here. Council, would a council member like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the council workshop meeting held on April 21st, 2015? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Prior to tonight's meeting, council met in executive session to handle or discuss legal matters. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a presentation to emergency responders with Councilwoman Sonyers and Councilwoman Brady join me and Chief O'Donnell on the floor. And Chief, you'll go first. Um. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening, members of Municipal Council. Uh, I'd like to personally thank uh, each of you for taking the time during this evening's meeting to recognize the personal sacrifices and team efforts of these first responders and support agencies uh, who assisted us in our time of need. Uh, so far this year, the Northstown Fire Department has responded to two extra alarm fires. Uh, the first was a four alarm fire uh, that occurred at 611 Sweet Street on February 4th. Uh, that fire also claimed the life of one civilian. The second incident was a three alarm fire that originated at 818 Cone Street on April 19th and, and spread to five adjoining dwellings. When fires like these uh, occur, we need a tremendous amount of personnel and resources uh, to effectively mitigate and control these incidents. And without this group here behind us, uh, we would probably still be up there with our resources we have in our community. So again, thank you for thanking them. And I appreciate uh, you guys uh, giving us an opportunity here to tonight. First of all, Chief O'Donnell, thank you very much. Um, these are times when North Town Council really enjoy their duties. In the midst of tragedy, a lot of times there is a silver lining, that silver lining being our emergency responders. We completely appreciate the hard work, the diligence, the commitment that you put forth in handling emergencies as they arise in North Town. I'd like to start first with doing the individual recognitions. Would Battalion Chief John Rimelart come forward, please? Chief Rimelart. Whereas the above named member of the Norristown Fire Department displayed courage and a dedication to duty on February 4th, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Sweet Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartments and in the hallways while a fire raged out of control in their building. The above member utilized his training and quick action to safely remove a victim from an upper floor apartment and successfully bring them down on a ground ladder. The above members showed extraordinary strength, agility, and courage while raising a 35-foot ground ladder and then ascending it at almost a 90-degree angle 
to reach and successfully remove a trapped victim from an upper floor. Whereas the above named member acted swiftly and professionally during this incident, he accepted the challenge before him and performed his assignment without flaw. As a result of his efficiency and dedication to duty, a victim was removed from the building to safely. Chief Remillar, congratulations. Would Chief Tim Hosington come forward, please? Did I pronounce it correctly? Chief Tim Hoisington. I like to get it right. Sorry about that. Assistant Chief Tim Hoisington, whereas the above named member of the Norristown Fire Department displayed courage and a dedication to duty on February 4th, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Swede Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartment and in the hallways while a fire raged out of control in their building. The above named member used his training and quick action to assist in the rescue of a victim trapped from an upper floor of the building by ground ladder. The above member performed his duty while demonstrating extraordinary strength, agility, and skill. Whereas the above named member acted swiftly and professionally during this incident, he accepted the challenge before him and performed his assignment without flaw. As a result of his efficiency and dedication to duty, a victim was removed from the building. Congratulations, Chief. <laughs> Would Assistant Chief Harry Reese and Firefighter Anthony Barbado please come forward? <laughs> Did I pronounce your guys' names right? Thank you. Assistant Chief Harry Reese and Firefighter Anthony Barbado. Whereas the above named members of the Norristown Fire Department displayed courage and a dedication to duty on February 4, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Swede Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartments and in the hallways while a fire raged out of control in their building. The above members performed search and rescue operations in zero visibility conditions. The above members were able to locate a victim utilizing their training and experience. The above members were able to begin the process of bringing an unconscious victim from the building in an attempt to save a life. Whereas the above named members acted courageously and professionally during this incident, they accepted the challenge before them and performed their assignment without flaw. As a result of their efficiency and dedication to duty, a victim was removed from the building. Congratulations. One for each. Read that one, and there's one for each. Okay. Would Lieutenant Tim Meckman, Firefighter Andrew Piles, and Firefighter Chris Camarda please come forward? You're only going to have two or three. The third one's on his honeymoon. Which one's on his honeymoon? Camarda's on his honeymoon. Okay, thank you. More important stuff. Lieutenant Tim McMinn and Firefighter Andrew Piles. 
whereas the above named members of the Norristown Fire Department displayed courage and a dedication to duty on February 4th, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Sweet Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartments and in the hallways while a fire raged out of control in their building. The above members utilized their training and quick action to safely remove a victim from an upper floor apartment and successfully bring her down an aerial ladder to the ground. The above members also assisted in the deployment of hose lines and assisted occupants inside the building find their way to safety. Whereas the above named members acted swiftly and professionally during this incident, they accepted the challenge before them and performed their assignments without flaw. As a result of their efficiency and dedication to duty, several victims were removed from the building to safety. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Who gives me? And there's one for each of them. Okay. That's system. I like your system. Firefighter Dana Lee. Firefighter Sam Domino. Firefighter Robert Spitko, Firefighter Andrew McIntyre, would you please come forward? Oh, I didn't miss that one. My apologies. Battalion Chief Richard Lockhart, please come forward. How could I forget you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Battalion Chief Richard Lockhart, Firefighter Dana Lee, Firefighter Sam Domino, Firefighter Robert Spicko, Firefighter Andrew McIntyre. Whereas the above named members of the Norristown Fire Department displayed courage and a dedication to duty on February 4th, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Sweet Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartments and in the hallways while fire raged out of control in their building. The above members utilized their training and quick action in an attempt to control a fire while facing overwhelming obstacles. The above members were able to begin to locate the fire, remove victims to safety, and advance hose lines in near zero visibility and high heat. Whereas the above named members acted swiftly and professionally during this incident, they accepted the challenge before them and performed their assignments without flaw. As a result of their efficiency and dedication to duty, several victims were removed from the building to safety. Congratulations and thank you. I can't believe I did that. This is the police department one. Officer Gennard, Dana Gennard's here to accept that. Which one's this? These are the ones that just finished. That's fine. So there's only one police officer one here. Yeah. Right. And that is Officer Hill. The bottom one, Dana Gennard. Okay. All right. Would Officer Dana Gennard come forward, please? On behalf of Sergeant William Timms, Officer Charles Douglas, 
Officer Christopher Lefebvre, Officer Brian Boyer, Officer Brian Ferguson, Officer Benjamin Lycona, Officer Dana Gaynard, 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 I have to get it right. Whereas the above named members of the Norristown Police Department displayed dedication to duty and took decisive actions on February 4th, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Sweet Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartments and hallways while a fire raged inside their building. The above members used their training and quick action and assisted with removing multiple victims to safety and assisting fire department personnel with multiple on-scene operations. Whereas the above named members acted swiftly and professionally during this incident, they accepted the challenge before them and performed their assignments without flaw. As a result of their efficiency and motivation, many victims were removed to safety. This would not have been possible if not for the high degree of professionalism and training exhibited on February 4th, 2015. Congratulations and thank you. This is Andrew Myers. Would Lieutenant Andrew Myers come forward? <laughs> Lieutenant Andrew Myers, whereas the above named member of the East Norton Fire Company displayed courage and a dedication to duty on February 4th, 2015. Whereas a four alarm fire broke out at 611 Sweet Street, multiple residents were trapped inside their apartments and in the hallways while a fire raged out of control in their building. The above member utilized his training and quick action to safely remove a victim from an upper floor apartment and successfully bring him down an aerial ladder to the ground. Whereas the above named member acted swiftly and professionally during this incident, he accepted the challenge before him and performed his assignment without flaw. As a result of his efficiency and dedication to duty, a victim was removed from the building to safety. Thank you and congratulations. Councilwoman Brady, would you come forward to do the next set, please? These are in recognition for the various different agencies who lent their assistance. Whereas on April 19th, 2015, a three alarm fire occurred in the 800 block of Cone Street in the municipality of Norristown. Fire broke out at 818 Cone Street and quickly spread to five other homes. Whereas with limited access to fighting the fire, extreme heat and fire conditions, other homes of the block were saved and no one was injured. Whereas the many agencies that assisted the Norristown Fire Department in an operational and support role at the incident. Therefore, the Norristown Fire Department would like to thank the Norristown Police Department for their professionalism, dedicated emergency service, and commitment to the duty of the Norristown community. And I'll re uh, read and present for the various different agencies. The Norristown Police Department assisted the Norristown Fire Department. Do we have anyone from the Norristown Police Department to accept? Chief Talbot's here. Awesome. Oh, that's right. Perfect. <laughs> This one is to the Hancock Fire Company, with thanks from the North South Fire Department. That's the chief now. Just keep them going. We're gonna, we'll keep them going. North uh, Fire, I'm sorry, Fairmount Engine Company Number Two, assisting the fire, North South Fire Department.
Montgomery Hose Fire Company. Thank you. Thank you. Norristown Hose Fire Company. Norristown Fire Police. Thank you. Thank you. Norristown Code Department. The American Red Cross. The Montgomery County Department of Public Safety. <laughs> Montgomery County Incident Support Team. <laughs> Bridgeport Fire Company. <laughs> Goodwill Fire Company. <laughs> Norriton Fire Company. <laughs> Swedeland Fire Company. <laughs> Plymouth Fire Company. This is sweet. This is sweet. This is sweet. This is sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. King of Prussia Fire Company. Baron Hill Fire Company. Conchahawken Fire Company number two. Worcester Fire Company. Thank you. Thank you. Center Square Fire Company. Lower Providence Fire Company. Limerick Fire Company. Gladwin Fire Company. Upper Gwynedd Fire Company Department. Tower Minson Fire Company. Royersford Fire Com Department. Perky Omen Township Fire Company. Swedesburg Fire Company. Scott Lynch, Fire Marshal for White Marsh Township. Thank you. Plymouth Community Ambulance. Thank you. Narbreth Ambulance. Penn Wynn Fire Company. North Penn Goodwill Services. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
same system? Yes. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to ask Council Vice President Sonia Sanders to come up and do the next set. So these awards are a recognition for the agencies as well for the NARS Apartments Fire. In recognition and sincere appreciation for your assistance, whereas on February 4, 2015, a four alarm fire occurred at 611 Sweet Street in the municipality of Narstown. Fire broke out on all floors of a five story apartment building, trapping multiple occupants inside. Whereas the many agencies that assisted in the Narstown Fire Department in an operational and support role at the incident. Therefore, the Narstown Fire Department would like to thank the Narstown Hose Company for their response to this unprecedented event. The members of the Narstown Hose Company performed their assignments with professionalism and dedication to duty. Our first recipient is Fair Fairmont Engine Company number two. Second agency is Hancock Fire Company. Montgomery Hose Fire Company. Narstown Hose Company. The Narstown Fire Police. Public Works, thank you. The Narstown Code Department, <laughs> Pennsylvania American Water Company, American Red Cross. Thanks, Brian. Montgomery County Public Safety. Montgomery County Incident Support Team. We could do that one too. Do it at the same time. Along, along with Fort Washington Fire Company. He's going to do them both. Thank you. <laughs> Bridgeport Fire Company. Goodwill Fire Company. Nardson Fire Company. Sweetland Fire Company. Plymouth Fire Company, King of Pressure Fire Company, Barron Hill Fire Company, Thank you, Conshohocken Fire Company number two, Thank you. Worcester Fire Company. Thank you. Thank you. Center Square Fire Company. Lower Providence Fire Company. Thank you. Limerick Fire Department. <laughs> Thank you. Collegeville Fire Company. Gladwin Fire Company. Thank you. 
Upper Gwinnett Fire Company. Abington Fire Company. Toa Minson Fire Company. Perseverance Fire Company. Flower Town Fire Company. Warriorsford Fire Company. Perky Oman Township Fire Company, number one. Plymouth Community Ambulance Association. Thank you. Volunteer Medical Service Corps of Lansdale. Narberth Ambulance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Horsham Fire Company. Penn Wind Fire Company. Thank you. Orland Fire Company. and North Penn Goodwill Services. Thank you so much, ladies. Richard. Richard. Which one? Richard. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Again, as we close, thank you so very much for your service to the uh, municipality of Norristown. We thoroughly appreciate and recognize all of the hard work you put forth. One more round of applause for our emergency. Vice President, any announcements? Yes, thank you, Madam President. The first announcement is in recognition of the municipality of Norristown. They were recognized by the Pennsylvania State Association boroughs at their annual bank banquet. Norristown's website was awarded second place. Elmwood Park Zoo Carnival will have games, food, fun, and lower parking lot that will take place Thursday, May 7th through May 10th and that begins at 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. There will be a grant opening for the ribbon cutting of Icons, which is located at 1003 East Main Street. That will be a sports bar and grill. The date of that is Saturday, May 9th at 5.30 p.m. The last announcement is Art Saves Me. This will showcase art featuring artwork from the Norristown Youth. Artwork will be on sale, $5 to $30. And that's sponsored by Communities That Care. And that is on Thursday, May 14th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Theater Horizon. 
Does anyone else have any announcements? That concludes the announcements. Thank you, Councilwoman Saunders. Uh, Madam Secretary, any public comment? No, there's not. Any communication? Nope. Thank you. We'll move into the uh, first item on our agenda. Mr. Crandall, um, who will give us information on easements and covenants for excess ingress and egress? Okay, and that's the attorney for the um, 900 Sandy Street, Luxor Lane. Ms. Nace, right? Hi. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Good okay. evening. Good evening. I have to say, I haven't been in this room in a while, and I'm enjoying your podium. <laughs> it's very nice. Thank you. Um, my name is Carrie Nace Pass. I'm an attorney with uh, Fox Rothschild. I represent uh, Sandy Springs Real Estate Partners, who are the owners of the property located at what is now known as 900 Luxor Lane. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, as you recall, uh, we did receive final approval um, quite some time ago to develop an apartment building on this property. And as part of that approval, uh, we are also including a fire lane access to the rear of the building. Um, when we went through and we were finalizing the, the plans, uh, we realized that Kelly Drive is actually a uh, private road, which is owned by the uh, former um, developer of the regatta, which was uh, developed quite a few years ago. Um, and in looking at the access easement, well, when it was developed by the owner of regatta, they granted an access easement to the other two lots, one of which is our lot, known as 900 Luxor Lane. Um, to allow us to use Kelly Drive for access purposes. Um, I'll hand out to you just so that you can follow along a little easier. This is a, um, an exhibit showing the access easement area. What's being handed out to you, um, as I mentioned, is an is a easement plan showing the original access easement that was granted by the prior developer. The area that's in green is the actual access easement. When we were looking at our plan, you can see just below the green area, um, there's an area that's highlighted in yellow. The access for the fire lane that goes behind the proposed building is just outside of the access easement area that was previously granted. Um, so what we have done is gone back to the owners of the regatta and asked them to extend the access easement area for this small portion um, so that we can construct the fire lane and then also have access uh, through that portion of Kelly Drive to get to the fire lane. The original access easement agreement that was signed years ago uh, by the developer of Regatta stated that any amendment to that access easement agreement requires approval of the municipality of Norristown. So in order for us to enter into that agreement with the uh, owner and to extend this area, we need to obtain approval from council. Um, we did go one step further to uh, give Norristown some additional rights as well so that in the amended um, access easement agreement we did include language that also grants Norristown an easement over and across this portion of the access area um, to provide emergency access to both lots one and two. Um, so we further ex expanded the um, the easement that was previously in place just to confirm that the municipality would have those access rights as well. So we're here this evening um, just requesting council approve um, the amendment to the access easement agreement to ex extend the area as shown on this plan. Okay, council, any questions? Councilman Simpson. Hey, Crandall, uh, 
Are there any objections to, to this? I mean, anything that planning gave with regards to uh, to this easement? No, there are no objections for staff. We uh, fully were engaged in the process and recommend the approval by council. Council, any other questions? Yeah. Councilman Perry? Did, uh, did our solicitor, um, were you able to look at the information in regards to um, the easement? Yes, uh, Councilor Perry, we did look at it, negotiated it with Ms. Nace's office, ran it past the rest of staff, and we're in agreement with uh, Administrator Jones's opinion. I think this is uh, a reasonable agreement for Norristown. And do we also know that the regatta is also in? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Council, any other questions? Would a council member like to make a motion to approve the First Amendment to the Declaration of Easements and Covenants for Excess, Ingress, Egress, and Utilities to allow construction of 900 Luxor Lane? So, so moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Chief Talbert, would you like to give us a little information on handicap signs? So we've uh, gone through our normal process and uh, we're requesting that you approve a motion to install handicap signs at 225 East Marshall and 1531 Arch. Uh, we're also asking, I'm sorry, those are for uh, removals at those two locations. They're no longer needed, so we're asking for those to be removed. Okay, thank you, Chief Talbert. Council, any questions? The council member would like to approve resolution 15-118 to remove handicap signs that are no longer needed and install HP signs for 225 East Marshall Street and 1531 Arch Street. Second. Did this require roll call, sir? Yes. Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. William Caldwell? Aye. Gary Simpson? Aye. Olivia Brady? Aye. Derek Perry? Sonia Sanders? Aye. Linda Christian? Aye. Vice President Sanders, would you lead us through the finance and code department sections of our agenda, please? Sure. For finance, we actually have a representative from Mali. Council is Mr. Dale Umbenhauer, who is the manager of the engagement. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here tonight to present for consideration the audited financial statements for the years December 31st, 2011 and 2012. Those audits are completed. Is the red light on on your mic on the bottom? Look down on the base. No, the no, base. no, no, no. The base of the, base the microphone. Of the microphone. I don't see a red light. I don't think he has a red they light. They need to hit it to make a red light. There you go. There, there you go. There it it's is. working. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not going on. Yeah. Yeah, it won't happen. It won't go off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm here to present for consideration the audited financial statements for the years December 31st, 2011 and 2012. Those audits are completed and copies of those reports have previously been distributed. So I would like to entertain a motion 
to approve acceptance of audited financial statement for the 2011 and 2012 year, end, year ended December 31st. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Hearing none, that motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Council President, one, one related question. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, just, uh, and this is probably for, for Mr. Jones. Um, since we've got the, the 12s and the 13s done, or excuse me, the 11s and 12s done, um, can we get a timeline for, for folks for the 13s, 14s? Ralph? Sure, I, I, I'll actually let Mr. Umbenhauer tell you that. I thought he was going to get, get away without talking to <laughs> <laughs> um, 2013 audit is well underway. We have a goal of having that finished and out the door by the end of May. Mm -hmm. And we have staff scheduled starting June 15th to work on 2014. At that point in time, once we get that finished, we'll be all caught up. All right, great. Great, thank you. Any other Our questions? next, I'm sorry. Any other questions? Thank you all again. Right. Thank you. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> wait, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Our next agenda topic is the code department. And uh, I would like to enter, entertain a motion to approve the HARP certificate of appropriateness for property 17 East Airy Street, 223 East Oak Street, 527 Stanford Street, 501 Astor Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any nays? This motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Sanders. Uh, Council, I'd like to make a motion to open the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Um, I'd like to open to the agenda to authorize the solicitor to file an amicus brief. Amicus brief in support of Lower Murray Township in the fish. It's <laughs> fish. It's fish. Oh, fish versus Lower Murray. In the fish appeal to the Supreme Court. Uh, before we act on it, uh, Mr. Kilkenny, can you give us uh, some information about this? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Um, this matter is uh, going before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and Norristown wanted to join uh, several other municipalities in support of Lower Marion's position. Uh, the case is related to the business privilege tax. Uh, a taxpayer in Lower Marion felt aggrieved uh, that owned several rental properties. Um, they went ahead and filed a petition on their taxpayer bill of rights, was denied. Uh, the Lower Marion's position was affirmed or supported by the Montgomery County Court of Common Pleas. But what happened is the Commonwealth Court, the appellate court above the Montgomery County Court of Common Pleas, ruled in favor of Mr. Fish, the taxpayer, and uh, basically held that the uh, business privilege tax does not, uh, does not apply or uh, uh, municipalities cannot uh, collect business privilege tax on rental properties. This is obviously a concern to many municipalities throughout the Commonwealth, and Laura Marion has asked other townships to uh, file briefs in support of their position to hopefully persuade the Supreme Court uh, to reverse the Commonwealth Court and uh, allow this um, allow business privilege tax to still be assessed on rental properties. So that's the, the purpose of that suggested motion, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Kilkenny. Council, any questions? Mr. Jones, um, would you like to comment on administration's uh, position on this uh, issue? Very briefly, uh, we certainly 
believe that it's in the good interest of the municipality to do that. We're doing some research now that will be in support of the uh, amicus brief that the solicitor files that will document the impact on the municipality. And there are some things that we think uh, that we, we can do once, uh, certainly if this uh, is overturned, uh, to make sure we strengthen our position in terms of being able to continue to co collect uh, effectively uh, that tax. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Would a council member like to make a motion to authorize the solicitor to file a the brief. The brief. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Madam President. Yes. If I can make a quick statement. Thank you. Two things. One, I would like to thank uh, the staff for their due diligence in, in a couple areas, and I think we touched on it earlier. One was the, uh, the sanitation and the trash um, contract that we had. I think, um, although we, we've been hearing certain, certain things about it, I think it was a great move, uh, and it was a great financial move looking forward. So I think that uh, once, once the municipality gets used to and understands the, the ramification or actually the good things that can occur as a result of utilizing the recycling to the level which we need to, uh, that it will become very beneficial to them. Secondly, um, I would like to also thank staff for their due diligence on uh, bringing our audits up to, up to, uh, to um, geez, I can't think now, bring them up to, up to current status. Um, I think their hard work should be recognized uh, for everything that they've been doing to make sure that we actually are in compliance with uh, all areas as a uh, local government. Thank you. Councilman Simpson, um, I concur, um, especially on the uh, audit um, issue. Did we have the motion and second to adjourn? Uh, no, no, no. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 